Brexit has significantly increased the importance of veterinarians in the trade in live animals and animal products between the UK and the EU. The number of veterinarians who can issue the necessary health certificates has tripled to more than 1,800 since 2019, the Ministry of Agriculture in London said on request. The Association of British Veterinarians, the BVA, was skeptical that the number would be sufficient. Due to Brexit difficulties and the corona pandemic, some companies delayed their exports. Therefore, some new requirements have not yet fully taken effect, said BVA boss James Russells. And he said, it is also important to remember that these 1800 veterinarians do not do the work full time, but integrate them into existing roles and responsibilities, said the head of the association to the German press agency. You also need to consider geography and ensure veterinarians are ready to do the job wherever it is needed. Both meat and dairy products and animal feed must be checked by veterinarians for an export health certificate and EHC before being exported. Composite products often require several EHC. For example, a sandwich with ham and cheese requires one certificate each for the ham and one for the cheese. When the EHC is issued, there are still problems, said BVA boss Russell. Filling out the required documents is a long and complex process. In addition, there are differences in the interpretation of the documents at the border. The association called for digital EHC. This means that the process can run more smoothly. The British Association of Meat Producers, the BMPA, criticized the fact that there were numerous difficulties in the first few weeks after the final Brexit, the UK's exit from the EU Customs Union and the internal market on January 1st. The association counted 125 technical problems by mid-February. This included the numbering of the documents, the stamp color or the fact that the forms were not in the right place in the vehicle. Meat sold to the EU from the UK was part of a 24-hour food supply chain with the expectation that it would be delivered the day after slaughter, said BMPA, uh, said the BMPA report um, for the UK Parliament in mid-February. Now exporters are happy if they can deliver the day after next. The costs also have skyrocketed by 60 to 100%. Products have to be stored longer, brokerage fees and the ports have to be covered, and the freight forwarders have longer travel times. But this is offset by falling income. In the first six weeks of the year, pork exports to the EU amounted to only 10 to 50% of the previous year's figure, according to the BMPA. In mid-February, it was 50 to 75%. The impression is that up to 25% of trade with the EU is permanently lost, former British Vice Veterinary Surgeon Alex Simmons warned against weakening its own standards in view of the export problems. Producers would turn more to the domestic market, said Simmons to the DPA. It is therefore very likely that they question rules that have been introduced for trade within the EU. In the end, you go back to what was before, a two-tier system, said Simmons. On the one hand, companies that comply with EU standards, but on the other hand, companies that only deliver in the UK and therefore do not adhere to the EU. And feeling bound by rules, that's a thing that will stick around for quite some time. And another thing is the United Kingdom market remains open for Zimbabwean exports and sourcing of key raw materials under a post-Brexit market access offer, which came into effect early this year. Zimbabwe is a member to bilateral and multilateral agreements, including SADC, COMISA, the latest African continental free trade area, the AFC-FTA, and the UK Economic Partnership Agreement, among others. When the UK exited the European Union configuration in 2017 after 47 years under withdrawal agreement, no, it was 2019, popularly known as Brexit, it meant that agreements to the UK had with the EU 
including the Interim Economic Partnership Agreement, the IEPA, obligations with Eastern and Southern Africa, no longer applied when Zimbabwe was trading with the UK. The UK is a key export destination for peas, citrus fruits, berries and cut flowers, among others. In order to address the Brexit challenge, Zimbabwe was now required to have a different trade arrangement with the UK under preferential terms, the Competition and Tariff Commission explained. Before Brexit, Zimbabwe and UK trade relations were governed by the EU ESA EIPA, which was signed in August 2009. The IEPA allowed Zimbabwe's exports to enter the European market including the UK at that time, duty-free, quota-free for all goods exported by ESA countries except sugar and rice, which had limited duration transitional agreements or arrangements. Discussions on a new agreement were then entered into with a view to avoid trade disruption between UK and ESA member states. Parties agreed to trade under similar terms as those prevailing under the IAPA, but, however, broadening and widening the agreement, said the Tariffs Authority in a public notice yesterday. Regardless of Brexit, the UK market remains open for Zimbabwean products and is a source of raw materials required in local production. Broadening implied inclusion of framework provisions such as rules of origin, customs and trade facilitation, fisheries and intellectual property rights, among others. In view of these, Zimbabwe, together with uh, Mauritius and uh, Seychelles in January 2019, signed an agreement with the UK to facilitate continuation of the preferential trade agreement. So it's another prolonged one, not a new one. The country completed its ratification process of the agreement last year in September. To give effect to its market access offer to the UK, Zimbabwe, gazetted statutory instrument, 9 of uh, 2021 Customs and Excise, which is the, uh, with the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and Eastern Southern Africa, uh, grants market access uh, offer through regulations in 2021. The SI effective from January 1st shows applicable rates of duty for exports from the UK into Zimbabwe for the period 2021 and 2022 for qualifying products imported under the agreement. According to CDC, by year 2023, about 80% of trade by imports volume from UK, as agreed in 2007, would enter the Zimbabwean market duty-free and quota-free. This year alone, about 1,824 tariff lines would enter the local market on conditions they meet the rules of origin criteria provided in the agreement, said the Commission. And that all applies to the EU as well. Because what was agreed last year with Zimbabwe by the UK, or not with Zimbabwe especially, but with ESA, is just that the deal the EU negotiated with them will continue. So I'm still waiting for a brand new deal from the British government. One they from scratch negotiate with anyone. At the moment, they are... Just to be frank, they're stealing the EU papers and just put their name under it. It's not a big achievement then. So we will see how that will go in the future. And if you want to stay informed, please subscribe to my channel. Auf Wiedersehen.